Hey guys, welcome to a new video. As you guys know by now, I often buy lots and lots of uh, LED strip for testing purposes. Often, these are just more of the same thing, but sometimes, sometimes there's something new. And today is such a day. How would you like 12 volt per single LED addressable RGB W strip? that only needs a single edge injection for a 10 meter or 32 feet run. It didn't exist before, but now it does. Let's take a closer look together. So officially this is an SK6812 strip and we've had 12 volt or even 24 volt SK6812 strip before, but those follow the rules of most 12 volt and 24 volt strips, and that's that for 12 volt you need to spread the voltage over three LED diodes, so it's addressable per three LED packages, and for 24 volt even per six. The strips you're seeing now are just for illustration purposes, but you get the idea. You you have zones instead of single LEDs, and this greatly decreases the resolution of the strip. As an exception to those rules, we've had 12 volt WS2815 and a little less popular, the 12 volt GS8208. And those two chips also enabled single addressable 12 volt LED strips. But this is the first time there is now an RGB W option. But this strip actually works in a very different way than those strips did before. The downside of 12 volt WS2815 and GS8208 was power usage, which worked very differently versus other strips. Normally, if you use 100% red, you only use about one third of the power versus 100% RGB white. But with WS2815, for instance, 100% red uses the same amount of power as 100% RGB white because of how it's constructed. Although that made the strip easy to calculate for, it also made it horribly inefficient. This new strip is something altogether different though. Although a lot of strips say they are constant current, most of them act in a constant voltage way. This means that the input voltage is what is used directly by either dropping over multiple diodes or using resistors, etc. Even WS2815 didn't act like a true constant current chip. And when voltage drop would occur, this would be visible in the light output as well, voltage drop, so the LEDs would become dimmer or discolored. This new strip is something different though. It seems to act truly like constant current. For constant current, the input voltage is of less importance, and if the diode needs 3.6 volt, for instance, it shouldn't matter too much if 12 volts coming in, or say only 8 volt. Both are enough to satisfy the specific needs for that diode, or voltage requirements at least. It'll just use more or less current to get to the same output level. And well, for the first time, this is actually what is happening with this strip. Take a look at this example shot. At the start we have 12 volt, and at the end there is about 8 volt left because of voltage drop. But if we compare the start of the LED strip and the end, they are 100% exactly the same brightness, which normally when voltage drop occurs on our regular 5 or 12 volt strips or even our 24 volt strips, certainly is not the case. This also changes the whole way these strips need to be treated. No longer does the 4 amp for an edge injection apply, or at least not to these strips. When testing, I blew through 5 amp fuses like there were nothing, and I was even very close to blowing a 10 amp fuse with a single injection. Basically, it'll take an unlimited amount of amps until either the voltage drops too low, or the conductors it's running on burn up. <laughs> this also brings us to a few downsides for this strip. Let's run through those quickly together. 1. Power. This strip can suck power like there's no tomorrow. 5 meters or 16 feet can use up to 163 watt for just 5 meters or 16 feet of strip. That is insane! Normal patterns, however, use about the same as other inefficient 12 volt variants, and the strip is nice and bright. 
As always, please see my real-world power measurement sheet for the measurements. This is also the reason the strip comes with an attached barrel plug for extra power injection. The JST plug is officially limited to 3 amps, and this I've seen it go as high as 8 to 9 amps. Although the included JST pigtail did a lot better than much of the other generic versions I have. Second downside, it can run very hot. Since now more current is coming from a single injection, that part of the strip can easily reach over 100 degrees centigrade. These strips need an aluminium profile, especially if you're going to use white, which can draw more power than the color diodes. Number three, normal injection rules don't apply. Out of the window, don't look at them anymore. But it's also not immune to voltage or rather power drop at the same time. You still need to inject or otherwise the LEDs on the strip or the strip as a whole will just fail to function anymore. Four, data limits still apply. Do not go above 500 LEDs for a single data port, especially since these are RGBW, or rather you can, but your frame rate will start to drop. Five, the measured CRI or the quality of the white light isn't great. Even though it has a dedicated white LED diode, its CRI isn't very high, so this cannot be used for any primary lighting purposes, in my opinion. Six, it's not cheap. What are you gonna do? But of course, there are also upsides. The whole strip will always look equal brightness, no matter the length. It's not like injections aren't needed anymore, as I said, but at least the varying voltage, because of voltage drop, doesn't cause brighter and dimmer LEDs anymore. Two, the strip is nice and bright and vibrant and gives off a decent amount of light, although the 24 volt 720 LEDs per meter Cobb RGB strip is still definitely king here. This strip gets pretty bright. Three, it's easier to wire, I'd say. Running within limits, the strip can easily do 10 meter or 32 feet of LED strip with just a single edge injection and do so much better than previously available strip. This also means you can do 20 meter or 64 feet with just front plus end injection, unheard of for 12 volt and especially single addressable strip. For measuring the PWM waveform, it uh, has a PWM of about five kilohertz and a very nice PWM amplitude. So it's good on camera and other flicker sensitive applications. Five, it's available in 60 LEDs per meter and 144 LEDs per meter, giving you great resolution for 12 volt LED strip. Regarding brightness, it's always a bit hard to quantify because I don't have a good measurement setup for that, but here are some SK6812CC, WS2815, and SK6812 per three addressable. I'll have power draw and my observations of brightness on screen for these comparison shots. So these might look like a lot of downsides, but it's mostly things to take into account when designing your setup. The upsides of the strip can certainly outweigh its downsides when dealt with properly. And as I started the video with, this is something completely different than we've had before. For normal patterns and effects, as I mentioned earlier, you can do 20 meters or 64 feet with just a front and end injection in regards to power. Effects and such things at 100% should be fine and even 100% white, but then not with color mixed in, should also be fine in regards to voltage drop or power on the strip and should look perfectly even from the first to the last LED. Even in the middle where other strips, if you have long stretches, would still show a little bit of voltage drop, so would be dimmer, this one will look 100% equal at all points. However, remember the data channel limits. For RGBW, I recommend about 500 LEDs per channel, so you'd have to combine it with, for instance, a diff solo to make sure you can disconnect the data line in the middle, which would be about 10 meters away, and add a fresh new data channel there. That would put you slightly over the 500 limit with being two times 600 LEDs, but that should at least give you very decent frame rates. The same kind of also applies to a five meter length or 16 feet length of the 144 LEDs a meter version. Although front and engine injection will be enough power wise, 
Um, for data, you're clearly above the five or even 600 with 720 LEDs. So frame rates there will drop. And it's up to you if that's acceptable or not. Currently, I only know of one source that has this strip available and it's linked in the video description as always. If I find more alternatives that also start to sell this variant, I'll be sure to update it. I've also added a specific section on my website dedicated to constant current digitally adjustable strips since there are likely more to follow in the future. And well, I think I'll leave it at that. I hope I was able to do a decent job of explaining just how these strips are different. Questions are always welcome in the comments or just come to the Discord server. Lots of people hanging out there. If you like learning about new LED strips, maybe consider subscribing to the channel. And I hope to see you all again in a new video, during a live stream, or maybe in the comments. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.